Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about Canopus, the second brightest star in the night sky that was actually used for navigation for centuries, and surprisingly it's still used in navigation today. Anyway, let's discover more about it and welcome to What The Math. So before we actually go and check out that star, let's uh, land somewhere on a continent on our planet Earth and find out where the star is located. It's actually quite visible from anywhere in the southern hemisphere, but it is only visible partially um, on some months in the year from the northern hemisphere. So we might actually have to go somewhere like Australia or South America to try to discover it. So here's Australia, and if I were to land um, somewhere on this continent, let's just land right in the middle, very close to Iris Rock. Okay, maybe not so close. Kind, I kind of missed. But anyway, so here we are in Australia, and we're going to just point ourselves at Canopus. And um, that's uh, this really famous star is located right there in that region of space. Now, let's actually just slowly start going toward it. This star is actually quite far away, it's about 313 light years away from us. And it's considered to be um, a kind of a supergiant with a temperature of about 7000 degrees Kelvin and the total size of about 70 times the size of our own sun. In other words, if we were to actually try to place this star in our solar system, it would most likely reach Mercury. Now, why are we talking about Canopus? Well, for one, like I mentioned in the introduction, it's actually a star that uh, the ancients from many different cultures used to orient themselves. It was basically used for navigation. This beautiful bright star was quite visible from pretty much anywhere in the sky. And being the second brightest star after Sirius, it was quite easy to see even on nights where there would be very, very few stars in the night sky. So in that sense, it was actually very, very good for, uh, you know, being able to position yourselves around um, a region on, in the southern hemisphere. And it's also kind of relatively close to the southern pole, so sometimes it's known as the uh, southern polar star. The northern polar star is, of, co of course, Polaris. It's very, very famous. But this one is a little bit least, less famous, mostly because it's not directly um, in the southern pole, pole region. But it is relatively close to it, and it will get even closer in about 14,000 years. Now, you may actually know about this star if you read science fiction, because Canopus is the system where the infamous uh, planet from Frank Herbert's Dune is located. And this planet is, of course, known as Arrakis, the, the planet also known as the Dune, the sand planet. Now, we will obviously have some planets orbiting here, and we're going to go and check them out, but I highly doubt that any of them is going to be Arrakis-like, but we never know. And also, we don't really know if there are any planets around uh, Canopus just yet, because we haven't really discovered any. We have, haven't really been looking very closely either, so for all we know, there might be something around there. But if I were to accelerate time here, you'd see that there's actually quite a lot of things going on in the system, specifically planets and asteroids and comets and stuff like that. Now, I actually wanted to mention this planet because I very recently made a video about Voyager 2, and in that video I very briefly mentioned that uh, Voyager 2 actually used um, Canopus for navigation. Um, and not just uh, Voyager 2, as a matter of fact, a vast majority of satellites and probes and spacecraft use Canopus for navigation, and it's actually a brilliant uh, system. So if you are located in somewhere in the solar system, and you point yourself at Canopus, because it's relatively close to the southern pole, um, and because you're probably flying um, in the direction... Well, actually, let me, let me show you. You're probably fl uh, flying somewhere in the same plane of orbit as other planets in our solar system, so in other words, you're going somewhere this way or somewhere along the plane. And um, you basically just need two points for navigation. You can look behind you and use the sun, it's on the same uh, planetary orbit. And then you can basically look at Canopus, which is pretty much right uh, below you. It's in the southern 
hemisphere, it's right there. And using these two points, it's actually very, very easy to position yourself pretty much anywhere in the solar system. So I can be somewhere right here, and I don't really know where I am, but by looking at Canopus and establishing the actual location in terms of degrees, and then by looking at the sun and doing the same, I can then use the data I gathered from Earth and estimate my current location. So Voyager 2, and really all of the Voyagers and uh, many other probes, including, of course, uh, most of the probes that were launched um, into deep space, use both Canopus and the Sun as a kind of a very unusual but very, very cool um, navigation system. Now, this is actually unofficially known as the uh, Canopus Tracker or Canopus Tracker, depending on where, what part of English-speaking region of the world you're from. But um, what's interesting is that even today we still use the same system because it's so effective. And the only time it actually failed was during 1974 where Mariner 10 spacecraft uh, was actually on the way to Mercury and um, unfortunately had a little speck of, uh, of dust on its lens that measured the luminosity of Canopus and it accidentally mistook that spec for Canopus and kept turning around and moving around and shifting and wasting its fuel basically. But luckily it didn't waste enough fuel and was still able to make it back, or uh, well, not make it back, but make it to uh, Mercury. But anyway, so let's actually take a look at some of the planets in this system, just for fun. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of variety and quite a lot of various color selections. And look at that, I was totally wrong. There is actually a planet known as uh, Canopus 1, and it's a torrid, uh, desertic subterra. In other words, it is Arrakis. We have discovered Arrakis, and this is what it looks like in Space Engine. Welcome to the dune, everyone. This is probably, uh, unusually, the most unusual um, encounter I've had in um, Space Engine because I didn't actually think I would have something that's from the science fiction present in the game. But at the same time, the temperature here is like 2,620 degrees, so in that sense, don't expect anything to survive on this uh, planet because it's a little bit too hot. And it also has a moon with a very similar super hot temperature. Uh, most of the planets here, as you can see, are actually very hot. So this one here is 1600 degrees Celsius. This is Canopus 2. And don't forget, these are all um, procedurally generated, so they don't actually maybe exist in real life. But interestingly, this one has a moon that's very, very close uh, to, uh, to the surface here. So if I accelerate time, you'll see how fast it orbits around the second planet. And a lot of these objects are actually very interesting looking. So this is a Terra-like object. This one here is a Super Terra, or a Super Earth, with 17 moons. Quite a lot of moons. And quite a hot climate of 1500 degrees Celsius. Uh, but interestingly, as we keep going, we'll eventually discover this. A warm sub-aquaria, basically a warm liquid world with temperatures of 56 degrees Celsius and green surface and what seems to be sulfuric oceans of sulfur or something. I'm not entirely sure what kind of liquid this is, but clearly not water because it's not present on the surface. The other objects are um, gas giants and this one here is another hot super aquaria. So quite a lot of really cool objects here and quite a lot of interesting places to visit, including this object that actually has rings. And look at these beautiful, beautiful clouds. Let's go and land on this one, actually. Let's go check it out. Um, so uh, interesting fact about Canopus system is that it's actually been used in science fiction quite a lot, including Star Trek, at least uh, two episodes. And um, in other... Uh, books like, for example, the Star Kings by Edmund Hamilton. So this system is actually very popular, mostly because it's such a bright star and so easy to see in the night sky. But honestly, the coolest thing about it is, of course, the fact that we use it in navigation. And I'm not entirely sure what these lines are and whether this is artificial, a bug or a feature. But look at that, this is actually rings. This is incredible. These are very unusual rings that 
seem to be spinning around this planet and create these unusual effects, but they don't spin um, where you would usually find rings. So in that in that sense, it's probably a bit of a bug. But let's actually just accelerate time and see what this looks like. This is actually one of the newer versions of Space Engine, so there's still some a few bugs here and there. But this is really cool. I've never seen anything like this before. A very unusual formation of rings on the super hot planet Canopus 9. So, uh, yes, the fact that we still use this in navigation and the fact that it's such an effective navigation tool is actually what makes Canopus really, really cool. And, of course, the fact that it's such a bright star and so easy to see from pretty much anywhere and has a very specific spectrum, a very specific amount of X-ray radiation that it emits. Uh, most of the spacecraft that use it for navigation can easily um, find it in the night sky and usually don't confuse it for anything else. And so, in that sense, Canopus is actually going to be still used quite widely, especially once we start exploring space um, and become a space-faring species. But for now, well, that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video, and thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, you learned about Canopus and now you know a little bit more about it. And if you know something else about it that I haven't mentioned, please mention it in the comments below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and space out and as always, bye bye.